Hello and welcome to this new Blender tutorial. In this video I want to show you an exciting add-on that allows you to add animated spiders to your scenes. Let's get started. Ok so the add-on I'm talking about is called SpiderFi and it's available on the Blender market. It costs $36 however I think it is really worth it since you can get really quickly extremely good results from it. Um, it contains all those bugs that you can see here. Uh, locusts, black widows, bird eating spiders, beetles and centipedes. They are optimized for both cycles and eevee. They are very detailed and also already animated. So yeah, it is really quickly to add them to your scene and everything works pretty good. You will see this later on in the video. And I leave a link to this add-on in the video description. It is an affiliate link, which means that I'll get a commission for each sale through this link. However, I truly believe in this add-on and I uh, really recommend it to you if you want to add spiders or other bugs to your scene. And I've previously used this for uh, those two TikTok videos, this one and this other one. And this one, let me see, even got 2.6 million views, which is uh, really crazy. And here is the video that we're gonna create in this tutorial. All right, so to start off, we just have this image that I provide you with the link in the description if you want to follow along. And what we also need is FSpy. This, uh, this is an open source software that you can download for free and we're going to use this to match the perspective of our camera. So just go to fspy.io and here you can download it for Mac, Windows or Linux. And when you're here also get the fspy add-on for Blender so that we can import the camera into Blender later on. Okay, so let's uh, first open up fspy, I already have it installed and drag and drop our image in here. So fspy is gonna help us to extract the perspective of our camera that I used when I shot this image and for this we need to align those lines. So we have this green one which is the y axis and the red ones which are the x axis uh, with perpendicular lines in this image. So first I'm gonna choose this line in here and align it with the green one which is going to be our y-axis and uh, let's put the other one over here and what I'm doing is I hold down shift in order to make those precise adjustments and open up this magnifying glass. So let's place this here and then the x-axis has to be perpendicular to the y-axis we placed so I can put this here and the other one, say, over here. And now you can see we get our origin point with this gizmo. And in this case, the set axis is pointing downwards, which is not what we want. So let's go to those vanishing point axis and change the X to minus X and now this is perfect. We can also enable the XY grid floor and now you can really see that this, uh, that this plane is lining up with our ground plane which means that we correctly extracted the camera's perspective. I'm gonna place the origin so it's somewhere here. Or maybe, yeah, doesn't matter. Then go to file, save as and I'm gonna call this perspective and save it to my computer. Then we can open up Blender. Let's create a new file, delete everything. Let's go full screen. And I also enabled the screencast keys add-on so in the bottom left corner, you can now see all the shortcuts that I press. 
and let me close this up. And first, if you haven't done this already, you need to install the FSpy add-on. So if you downloaded it from the website I showed you, you should have gotten a zip file. So you can go to the preferences, add-ons, click on install, locate the zip file, select it and click on install add-on to install it to Blender. I already have this done, so I just search for FSpy. And here, just make sure that you tick this checkbox enable, uh, to make sure that it is enabled and we can import the camera. To do so, go to File, Import, and here we have the FSpy option. So just click on this, then I have it here, perspective.fspy. This is our file, and let's import this. Okay, so you can see that we now have this camera imported and this is exactly in the same perspective as when I uh, created this image. And uh, we also have the image as our background in the camera, which is perfect. So let's add in geometry, press shift A, let's get a plane, tap into edit mode, switch to edge selection and Move this along the x-axis, G, Y, align this with the wall, G, X, bring this over here, just so we cover the ground, G, Y, over here, let's make this fill the frame, okay, then I enable the transparent view, Shift A and bring in another plane, this one is going to be our furniture that we have in here. Let's also go to edit mode, G, Y. Let's bring this over here. Then G set and align it with this, uh, uh, what is it called, with this edge. So we only need this front edge, so I can delete this, X vertices, go to vertex selection. G, X, bring this over here and align it. Also do the same here. Select both vertices, E, set, and extrude it upwards. This doesn't have to be perfect. Um, then control R and add a loop cut. Let's also model those parts down here. So again, E, set to extrude it downwards then i add another loop cut e set bring it down and just roughly model the outline control r let's also do it on the other side e set bring this down control r select those two e set Bring it down, G, X, and now we have this roughly modeled. Now, what I want to do also is uh, extrude this backwards a bit. So we press E, Y, and bring this back here. And also select this, G, oh no, E set. Bring this down. Uh, this is just so that the spiders that are going to be inside, inside this furniture, uh, get shadow from this object. That's why I closed it up behind it, so that we get proper shadows. Okay, so now let's add a shader to those objects. Let's open up a shader editor. Create a new material. Let's call this a uh, projection because we're going to project our image onto those objects. So first let's press shift A and bring in a shader, no texture, image texture. Shift A, texture, image texture. Plug this into the base color 
and in the drop down menu we should have our perspective image already and if we switch to the shader preview uh, we can't see anything this is because we don't have a UV map so let's tap into edit mode select everything U and project from view this looks uh, pretty good yeah it just has to look good from the camera view and we're not gonna see this in the final render anyways so let's also do it with the ground let's give it the same material projection tap into edit mode select everything and if we now do the same project from view you can see that this is totally distorted this is because we don't have enough geometry so we can just right click on it choose subdivide subdivide it a few times then again you project from view and now this is way better um, let's also switch this from repeat to clip so we only see the image where it is actually in the frame okay that's fine for now so let's continue and add in the spiders which is uh, the coolest part of this tutorial so if you have the spiderfy add-on enabled you can open the side panel with the n key and here you have all the options so first we can choose what kind of box we want to add so we can add locusts blacks black widows bird eating spiders beetles and centipedes I think they plan to add more of them in future updates, but uh, that's what we currently have. And uh, for this one, I'm going to go with the Black Widows. You could also select multiples, uh, multiple of them at the same time. Uh, but in this case, I just want the Black Widows. And I'm also going to call this Spider. Spiders. The amount of 200 is okay for now. We can adjust this later on if we want to. And I also want to add a goal. Uh, we're going to add collisions later on. But for now let's click on add box system. And if you play the timeline. We can see that we get those spiders emitting from this plane. Now in the preview this all gets a bit blurry. But there's an easy fix for this. For this. So let's, let's just quickly switch to EV. And in the sampling menu, turn off viewport denoising. So when we play it now, it is uh, a bit sharper and looks better. But then I'll switch back to cycles. Uh, because we're going to render this in cycles. Then let's select the spiders. Tap into edit mode. And from top view, I want to scale this plane a bit up along the x-axis and place it inside of our furniture so when we play this now you can see that they are coming out of here uh, but the problem we have is that they are not only coming out from the front side but also through the walls and behind it um, which we definitely don't want because this is gonna break the realism of our of our animation so what we can do is add a collision object around those borders to make sure that the spiders aren't walking through them. So let's press shift A, add in a cube, tap into edit mode, scale it down a bit. And then from top view, let's align this here, S, Y, scale it up and place this in here roughly around those uh, those borders shift D let's also bring it over here shift D again rotate it 90 degrees scale it up along the x-axis but I actually want to scale this up even more to make sure that they are never walking inside this wall so they also if they go out of here and walk behind here they won't walk into the wall and now to make this a uh, collision object you can so just select this go back to the spiderfy options and choose selected geometry to collision and what this does if we go to the physics properties you can see that it adds a collision 
to our object. And it somehow also adds a fluid, uh, which I don't think we need. So I'm going to turn this off for now. And when I play the animation, you can see that the spiders aren't going through here anymore. But we have another problem that they are somehow sliding along it and then uh, speeding up, which doesn't look realistic at all. But to fix this, we can go to the collision settings with the collision object selected and just turn off the stickiness. So when we play this again now, uh, they are behaving uh, way better. Okay. So now we have this collision object and the spider animation. We can further adjust the spiders if we want to, if we go to the particle settings. And here, for example, we can change the number of particles. I think I'm going to bring this down a bit to, let's say, 100. Let's look at it from the camera view. Yeah, I think that's already enough. Maybe make 125. Oh, that's too much. 100 and... 25. Um, let's bring this plane a bit back. G Y. So that we can see it from the camera view. Maybe even more G Y. Yeah, now it is better. Okay, so if you want to adjust the animation of the spiders you can go to the physics settings under movement and for example change the maximum land acceleration if you want to get them to go slower or faster but i think i'm um, i'm fine with the speed of them but what i want to turn down is the maximum land angular what's it called angular velocity because as you can see they are somehow uh, Sometimes turning extremely quick, which is not realistic at all. But if we bring this value down, uh, this should improve this. And now they are not doing those quick uh, rotations anymore. Maybe I want to make them a bit slower. Let's make this to 0.3. See how this looks. Okay, I think that's fine. If you want, you can also go to render and uh, change the scale of them or the randomness of the scale. But in this case, I think a scale of one is fine. So I leave it. And if you are happy with all the, uh, with all the particle settings, you can go over to cache and bake this. So now the particles are fixed and we won't get any issues when rendering. Okay, so now I think it is time to prepare prepare our scene for the rendering part. And uh, so let's first take a look at it from the render preview. And as you can see, the first thing I notice is that we don't have any light in the scene. To fix this, let's go up to the, go up here, turn off scene world, and let's see if one of those preview HDRI matches uh, good with our scene. I don't like this one. Maybe. No, that's too bright. Maybe this forest one was good. Yeah, I think that uh, that lighting matches our scene. So I'll keep this. And um, but the problem now is that we only have this in the preview. And as soon as we turn on scene world again, which is what we're gonna render afterwards. Uh, this HDRI is gone again. So let's go to the world properties, go to color, environment, texture. Now this becomes pink because we don't have any texture loaded in. And once we click on open, uh, we can add an environment texture. Now if you follow this, uh, this file path, you get to the location where the Blender uh, preview HDRIs are saved. And here we can just select this for forest EXR that we liked in the preview, click on open image, and now we have it imported. 
and we can use it for rendering. Um, and now it is also visible in the background, which we don't want. We only want the lighting of it. So let's go to the render settings and under film, enable transparent. So now we have a transparent background. And the next thing to do, uh, let's first hide this, uh, this collider object because we don't want this to render, uh, which is this cube. Let's enable those two options and disable it in the viewport and also for the rendering. Then uh, we also don't want this ground plane to be visible. We only want to see the shadows that are casted onto this plane from the spider. So we can achieve this by going to the object properties, visibility and turn the shadow catcher on. So now this is a shadow catcher and only the, uh, the shadows that are casted onto this object are visible and not the object and its texture itself. And also we don't want this, uh, this object here to be visible but this uh, shouldn't be a shadow catcher. Instead, we want it to be a holdout so that this is uh, like a mask. Uh, so we can't see the spiders that are inside it, inside of it, but we also can not see the object itself. So if I turn off the overlays, you can see that this is what we're going to render out. Now for the final render, I want to have two view, uh, two, two render layers. One of them for the foreground, which means the, the spiders, and another one for the background, which is going to be only the shadows. And I want to have them on separate uh, view layers in order to, uh, to have more control in the compositing phase. So what we're going to do is call this current view layer foreground. Then click on this copy button, make a new view layer and I'm going to call this uh, shadows. So let's go back to the foreground. Now this widows collection, we can disable it. Then also we got this spider collection created by the Spiderfy add-on that we can also disable. Then we need to organize those objects a bit better. So let's select the shadow catcher, press M create a new collection and call this shadow. Then another one for this uh, furniture. Also M, create a new collection and call this hold out foreground. We're going to have a separate one for the foreground and for the background. So, um, Let's do this right now. Right click on it, duplicate collection, and the other one we're gonna call hold out shadows. I'm also gonna rename the objects hold out foreground and hold out shadows. Okay, so I think. Uh, no, we're not ready yet. Let's also select the spiders M and create a new collection from them and call this foreground. So now we're in the foreground layer and in this layer we uh, don't want the shadows to be visible. So let's select the shadow collection, right click on it and choose uh, view layer set indirect only. So now we're still getting the bounce lighting from the shadow plane, but we won't see the shadow itself in this view layer. Then for the rest, uh, the holdout for the shadows, we're only also going to turn this off. Uh, so we still have this holdout object, but not the one that we're going to use for the shadows. Then in this view layer, in the foreground, we're also going to go to the render passes and enable denoising data, since we're going to use that later on in the compositing phase. And then we're ready to go to the shadow layer, also turn off the widows, so we don't need it. And 
also turn off the holdout for the foreground. Now we can take the foreground selection and in this shadow li layer we don't want to see the spiders but only the shadows from the spider. So let's right click on it in view layer and also set it to indirect only. So as you can see now we only have the shadows. Um, but the problem is that we also get the shadows from the furniture which we don't want because as you can see we already have this in the image itself. That's why we created two of those holdout collections because now we can take this uh, holdout for the shadows, go to the object properties and under visibility we already have to set to holdout, turn off every all the ray visibilities except the camera. And now this isn't casting any shadows anymore and we only have the shadows of the spiders. And I think we're ready to render. The only thing left to do is go to the render properties. Make sure that you are in cycles, otherwise all of this won't work. Then also let's enable adaptive sampling. Uh, let's give it a bit of motion blur. I'm going to bring down the shutter to let's say 0.16. The lower you set the shutter, the less motion blur you'll get. Um, and in the output properties, we currently have a 4K render, which I don't think is necessary in this case. So I turned this to 50%, which will give us a render result of 1080p. The rest is all okay. So we can go to the render tab, press F12 to render. And as you can see, it creates two layers, one with the spiders and another one with the shadows. You can switch between them if you go up here, see the shadows and the foreground. Now to combine those layers, let's go to the compositor, enable use notes. I don't want this uh, timeline. So let's close this up and we also have the backdrop enabled. So when we press shift A, output and choose a viewer node we can take a look at those outputs. And here we have our spiders. Now we need to delete those render layers. And no, I mean duplicate, not delete. And the first one is going to be the shadows and the second one, the foreground that we already have. And what we also need is an input image. Where is it? Um, image here we have it and load in our perspective image. So if we take a look at this you can see that this is way too big this is because we scaled down the render layers but our image is not scaled down so we also need to do this with the image so just press shift a distort and choose scale. Then change this to render size and now all of them have the, the same scale. In order to scale our backdrop to the size of our window, just use the shortcut Alt Home and this will scale to fit. Now let's composite the shadows onto this image. For this we need a color ramp node. So let's go to Converter, Color Ramp, bring this in here. And instead of the image output, we want to use the alpha output. Alpha, yeah, now it worked. And let's take a look at this. This is what this looks like, but we want to invert this. So let's switch those two stops. Just like this. And then we need a mix node. So go Shift A, color, mix. The image into the top input and the shadows into the bottom one. This in here and Now, aha, it isn't working because we need to switch the mix to multiply. Now you can slightly see those shadows. I want to, them to be a bit stronger. So I press shift A and bring in an RGB curves node and just darken them a bit down. They are also very noisy. So I press shift A 
and under filter choose the denoise node just bring this in here and this makes it a bit better okay so let's now continue and add in the spiders so we can just duplicate this denoise node and from our foreground render layer choose the noisy image the denoising normal and denoising albedo and to mix this over our current image we're going to use a shift a color alpha over node Let's bring this in here the spiders into the bottom input and when we take a look at this uh, you can see that we have our spiders in here uh, I think this looks pretty good but the only thing left that I want to do is press shift a again and add in an RGB curves node again and just slightly increase the contrast to mix all those layers a bit better together. And here we have it. Okay, so I'm happy with this result. I think this came out pretty good. And if you want to take a look at this, let me quickly turn off everything just to show you the note setup. If you want to pause the video or make a screenshot or whatever okay so if you want to render this out as an animation I recommend you to uh, set this to an image sequence so for example PNG change this to RGB then select the output folder where you want to save it and then go up to render render animation or use the shortcut control F12 I wouldn't recommend you to save this as an FFmpeg video and then set this to mp4 directly because it might uh, if blender crashes or if you want to take a break between the rendering you will have to start all over again and if you have an image sequence instead for example png you can just continue from where you left off and here's the final result That's it for this video, thank you for sticking around until the end. If you are interested in getting the Spiderfy add-on, I leave the link to it down in the video description. I am Nick from Blender Daily, see you in the next one.